Hey, I'm Cody, or Camelot331, um, and I am here today to tell you about my GameStop story. I was hired in July of 2007, um, which started an 11-year journey of complete and utter AIDS-filled hell. Like, the vast majority of the experiences that you have are going to be negative, you know, whether it be your superior, whether it be your customer base, um, anything. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's quite terrible. So when I started, I worked 40 hours a week right off the bat, um, which is something that was a little different um, back then than it is now. So you'll hear stories about people working at GameStop part-time, and they're working three to nine hours a week, um, which is the case now. Um, but when I started, I worked 40 hours a week and I'll tell you why I worked 40 hours a week because I did everything my store manager told me to do without question. And I mean like terrible task, whether it be alphabetize the entire PS2 wall, which was like 30 feet long, um, or, you know, cleaning the bathroom, which is a whole nother story when it comes to my old manager from back in those days. Um, but I would do it without, you know, question, which means he wanted me there. Um, so that being the case, um, I was there 40 hours a week going directly into holiday. Um, so if my first holiday hit, um, you know, it's a it's a holiday in retail. Um, it's my first holiday, you know, in the job force, really. Um, and it was absolutely god-awful. As you can imagine, working in just retail... Um, but working GameStop retail is pretty rough. And I did not expect it to be as slammed as it was. Now, one of the things I enjoyed the most was the midnight launches we did for like Halo uh, 3 and, you know, the World of Warcraft expansions. And we would have huge launches for those games, lines all the way down to the Walmart complex, which is just, you know, half a mile away. It was just awesome. Um, and the environment was always really fun. And, you know, to be honest, the business kind of took care of itself back in those days. Um, you know, we had the Edge card back in 2007, which gave you 10% off. So it's the same thing as the Power Card is today. Um, but they wasn't, you know, they, they weren't so strict on the, you know, the selling of it. Because everything was kind of selling itself. Because, you know, video games were exploding. You know, that's when Call of Duty um, 4 was coming out. And that's when, you know, Halo 3 was, you know, hitting it hard. So... At that time period, everything was selling itself, so it was a really enjoyable period. 2007, 2008-ish, um, probably the best years there. And I, I, you know, I love the people I worked with. You know, so if that's that's something I can take away from GameStop is, I really had a good relationship with all the people I worked with. There was some I did not. Um, specifically in the later, you know, years, there, I, you know, it was completely different, but. In the beginning, it was like we were a family, and that's that was really cool to me. And I know it's not like that at very many game stops, so it was a really isolated incident. So I was moved up to an SGA in March of 2008, and I was ready for that position way before that, but my manager told me that my district manager said I was too young for that, which is completely illegal. Of course, I didn't know that at the time, and what would I, well, I would have done anything anyway, but you know that was the case, unfortunately. So when I was in SGA and we started trans transitioning in from 2008 to 2009, you know, 2009 is two, the two, I don't remember exactly, but 2009, 2010 is when the power up card really came to flourishing. So right before the power up card really got rolling and we started that practice, you started to see really strange practices being done. Now I want to reiterate how terrible my manager was back in those days. He was a very bad person. Um, he would literally just put edge cards on people's transactions and just not and hope they wouldn't notice. And if they did, he would tell them to leave their store. Like if they tried to return it, he'd get mad or he'd blame it on somebody else. Um, and of course, he ran the top numbers in our district every uh, every week, of course. So naturally, you know, not to that extreme, but naturally that was my environment I was learning in. So, you know, I was right in the thick of it. You know, I was doing the shady things as well and <laughs> running very good numbers, which helped me get, you know, my promotions over the years. So I attribute it to that, which is a very scary thought when you think about it. 
Now, a good example of something shady that happens 99% of the time at GameStop, every GameStop you go into, I've worked at a lot of them, and I've never not seen this happen, right? So, let's say you're going into the store to buy Red Dead Redemption 2, okay? Now, let's say it's on sale for $39.99. New. Now, keep in mind, this is new, which the power-up card has no effect on other than points. Um, I don't know an employee that wasn't pushing, you know, the circle of life that wouldn't say, hey, if you get this power-up card, this will actually only be 39 and then you can pay the difference of the power-up card, and you'll save $5 off of the retail price. You get what I'm saying? So, they were saying it was $5 less than fifty nine ninety nine, but the game was already on sale for thirty nine ninety nine. So, they were lying to them to get a power-up card. And I saw that happen five times a day, every day, no matter what store I was in. Right? So, that's terrifying. Another good example of shady practices is reservations. So, I've seen people go into the reservation list and see that a customer had a game that he you know maybe didn't pick up or wasn't ring out through the system that had was had $60 on it so they would cancel that reserve either pocket the money from the refund or they would add 10 reserves onto a transaction so their numbers for that day would be outrageous through the roof um, that happened every day no matter what GameStop you go into now, these associates have to do this. This is what the higher management pushes. This is the environment they create. You have to fall in line or you lose your job. It's as simple as that. I can name off shady practices for, for days and days and days, but uh, you know, I think you get the idea. And I'm sure you've heard multiple stories from other sources of the shady practices they do. So, so I was moved up to an ASM in 2010. Um, where I had to transfer to a store about an hour away, and it was a new store that was opening up. So that was a really exciting opportunity for me. Unfortunately, it came to my attention that my manager had called the district manager and told him I was not ready to move up. Obviously, because he wanted me to stay and do everything, because that's how I was. I did everything for him. So he told the district manager that I was not ready to move up. Obviously, he thought that if he got somebody else in there that wasn't me and saw the things that he was doing, he'd be gone. Um, so that's probably the thought process he was you know, having at that point in time. And obviously, from that experience, you can see how bad of a person my manager was. Now... I'm going to have another video, a separate video, on specifically him, just talking about the crazy things that happened, because it, it would be an hour long, and I think you'd really enjoy it, so I'll do that as well, but moving on. So, I called our district manager, and was furious that my manager had called, and I was like, hey, I'm ready for this, you know, I want to do this, you know, because at the time, I was gung-ho, I wanted to move up, I wanted to do things, you know, I was excited, I was driven, um, and he was... All about it as well. So I ended up transferring to that store. Um, I drove back and forth, you know, an hour, which was pretty terrible. Um, but it was a really fun experience. I, I enjoyed opening that store. I enjoyed the people I met. Um, a very eccentric man I hired actually became the store manager a few years later. Um, another separate video. Guy's insane. I mean, absolutely insane. But another video, another video. So, um, 2012 came. I transferred back to my home store, where my hometown was, um, and I became the store manager. So this is 2012, and uh, this is when it started. You know, I was I was on top of the world, right? I was a store manager. You know, people that worked for me were my friends. We had great midnight launches. Everything was going great, and my store was ranking in the top 100, usually the top 10 in the entire country, every single week, which was huge because that never happened in our district. The store I'd taken over never even ranked in the top 4,000, and I was ranking 97, four, second, third, which was awesome to me. That's when I figured out that what you did 
the day before, the week before, the month before, the year before, never mattered. We were on conference calls. My district manager never even would acknowledge that I was second or third in the company. He would acknowledge people that were like 900 and 1200 in the company. And I would be sitting there in third. He would never say anything, which was insane to me. You know, you want positive reinforcement, right? I mean, that's that's a good way to manage. It's a good way to lead. So that was kind of the beginning of the end because I always strive to perform. Um, and we performed honest. We didn't, you know, commit shady practices like I did when I was under my other manager. You know, we were honest. We were just talked about games and we had fun doing it. And people came in to see us and we had loyal, dedicated customers. So, I mean, they were violent. They would fight for us, you know. They loved our GameStop. And that was a, a really cool experience. So one time my regional came in. And he said my store looked terrible because I was missing a few shelf talkers. Um, the top two rows for the most recent reset had two shelf talkers, like on the top two rows, and I didn't have them. Um, I don't remember what happened, if they got lost in the shipment or if they you know, got lost in general. No idea. So he drilled me for about an hour, and my district manager was standing right beside him and looked so furious at me. Then right after the regional left, he sent out a region-wide email saying that just because you rank good, and you exceed profit and plan doesn't make you a good manager, which was directed at me specifically. And that that was just the officially the beginning of the end for me because they were pointing out a thing here or there and completely ignoring how successful that our business was. So this is around the time where the company started to switch to complete and utter negative reinforcement. 100% across the board. Never a good job, right? It was always, hey, you guys are number one in all these categories, but you're number four in this category, and we got to fix that, or else you need to find a new place to work, which is actually something they actually said. My regional and my district manager had said on several occasions, if you can't do this thing we're focusing on this week, then you need to find somewhere else to work. So it was always under a threat of being fired. So this is around the time where the circle of life came in, and I know everybody has heard about that. Um, it literally made us rip off every customer. We had to. Our district manager would actually just say, hey, you know, just sell it to them. Sell it to them. You know, he would, he basically was telling us to just rip off everybody we could, which was a, a, a essentially the name of the game anyway at this point. And... If you didn't make Circle of Life for two weeks in a row, then you were basically under the threat of termination. They actually had a policy around it. If you did not make Circle of Life for two weeks, regardless of position, if you were a store manager, you didn't make Circle of Life for two weeks personally, then you would be threatened to be terminated. No first and final. Terminated. So you can see why the selling environment is the way it is, right? I mean, you can... It basically, the circle of life pushed us to be that way, and it still does today. Another thing that happened was the federal government required anybody making less than $47,000 a year to be eligible for overtime. Um, and all of the store managers are on salary at this point. So what does GameStop do? They make all their store management hourly associates. Now here's the catch. You have to work overtime to get your previous pay that you were getting salary. So your child was sick or you had an emergency and had to leave, you're not making your salary anymore, right? If you worked 40 hours, you were actually making $80 less than your salary weekly, which completely and utterly demotivated every store manager in the company, and I can guarantee you that. We went to conference that year, and the atmosphere was so negative everyone was so furious at the company and the company did not care every year around march april may um never a consistent date it was just random the store managers would get an annual bonus now our annual bonus was never high but every year it would get lower and the company would release a statement saying that they appreciated how hard we worked, but ultimately, the performance of the company falls on the shoulders of the store management. 
So we were directly responsible and either wouldn't get our annual bonus or it'd be a very small fraction of it. There was actually one year where my bonus was $64 for the whole year. GameStop. Power to the players. The last couple of years I was there, I never felt safe. It always felt like I was on the verge of getting fired. Whether it be for you know, your bathroom being not clean, your circle of life not being up to scuff, you just having a bad week in sales not beating plan for the year, you're not beating profit for the year. And my DM would come in all the time and just tell me that I just needed to resign. He'd look in the bathroom, the bathroom would be a little dirty, and he'd be like, you just probably should resign. Or we would be struggling in circle of life for the first week in two months. We've made seven out of seven weeks, and the eighth week we're struggling. He'd come up to the store, you probably should just resign, buddy. You're just not you're just not in it anymore. You should probably resign. This is about March of 2018. One of my associates called HR and made up a bunch of crazy stories to my HR rep because I was always extremely professional with my team. But those same people had gotten managers fired previously, like previous years, just by calling HR and making up stuff. So, of course, that's what happened. So, HR shows up, and, um, you know, they interview me, and I tell them, of course, none of that's true, whatever. Then they say that they're, you know, going to call somebody and see what they can figure out, but, you know, they don't know for sure what's going to happen to me. And at that point, I just, you know, handed my keys over, and I was like, look, you know, it's been a long time. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm done with this place. And then I, and I walked out, and that was it. 11 years, gone. <laughs> wasted and other good news as soon as I left I had another job lined up making almost double what I made at GameStop and it's so much easier so you know it all worked out all in all if you're ever thinking about working at GameStop you know we had we had people coming in you know younger kids and they were like man I want to work at GameStop I want to talk about games I want to sell games you know there is there is some of that you know you get to talk about games yeah but it's not what you think. You're going to get in there and you're going to, oh, in just one week's time, you're going to be getting threatened to be terminated if you're not ripping people off and making sure that they get that power-up card. Just add it onto their transaction. Hopefully they won't notice, especially if they don't speak English. If they don't speak English, you put it on that transaction. That, w- that was what we, in my district, called the district tax. We were we were uh, we had a district name, but we would say the district name tax. And the tax was if you didn't speak English, we put it on your transaction. Because what are you going to do? Come in and they never returned them. So it was all money in their pocket, which is fine, I guess. What can you do? Well, anyways, that's my GameStop story. Um it was a long time. Um if you're thinking about working there, don't. It is terrible. Um, I don't know why I worked there 11 years. Maybe I'm a masochist. I don't know. Maybe I like to be tortured. I mean, I am into that kind of thing. So, you know, that's probably why I stayed there so long. Because I just want to die anyway. So it was like a slow death. A slow burning death. So I hope you liked the video. I'm going to make a lot more from just specific GameStop stories that I've had, and there are some crazy ones. Crazy ones. I'll give you a hint. Oral sex in the back room. Okay? Drugs being sold out of the back room. Manager having sex with prostitutes in the back room. During store hours. That's not even close to the worst things that happened. So... So stay tuned. If you like this video, hit a like, hit a subscribe, leave a comment, tell me about your GameStop stories, and uh, let's share and have fun. All right, thanks. Bye.